console, we'll start off taking a look at the object storage and getting a repository added in with the object lock tag and the ability to transfer between these different kinds of object storage repositories. So to start off, to add in the object storage repository, that is very simple. Simply name the repository, you select which type of repository you'd like to add in, whether it's an agnostic S3 type of repository, Microsoft, IBM, Amazon, and even Wasabi storage right here from the console. Add in your service endpoints or the specific credentials tagged to the public cloud storage types. Then you have the interesting option here with the new version 7, which is going to be make my copies immutable, which I have selected here on this repository. And this one happens to be an on-premises version, but I also have an Azure storage added into the console. So here's the regular blob storage, an Azure lock storage, an on-premises object storage, and an on-premises lock object storage. Now I've added three of these repositories in so far, but I'm going to walk through the process of adding in that object storage that's locked as a repository just to demonstrate that here by hitting the add repository up here. And we're going to do on-prem object repo so I can identify this is going to be the repository addition that we're adding in. It's going to be an object storage. This will keep a local cache in order to create a repository for SPAS spinning up of say restore processes. And I already made a folder here, but if you don't have a folder, you can make a folder so it doesn't go to your main directory. Then we'll select the locked repository and you can add a password so you encrypt your data going to the cloud and you can manage your passwords for that. And then you want to manage the past days that you would like to have the data to sit on that cloud entity, whether you need to keep this for a longer period of time for compliance or whatever that might be. Keep in mind, you cannot lessen the amount of days for a locked object storage. So you can only increase these amount of days. So make sure you're being very mindful when you're selecting these amounts of days on here. And that's all it takes to add in an object storage inside of the console. Now we can take a look at the job configuration. And I did pre-configure some jobs just to show that we can go between each of these repositories and it really does not matter whether or not it's an object storage on-prem or we're working up here in the cloud. And this first one here is an on-prem initial pulling that data back down from the Azure in Microsoft environments to our on-prem object storage here. And then in our copy job you see off of this primary job, we're even sending it back up to an Azure storage, which could be a different Azure location, different storage account location with a locked object storage type. Now what we're going to do with this direct to object storage in the cloud, we're going to pull this one back down on-prem and this one just has one of our high level users in it for setting up our proper exclusions. And as we can see, this does go to our Azure repository. So this could even be side by side in the cloud for fast restoration types of purposes. We can have the SLA that makes sense in this case. And we're going to just right click on this job and they follow the same policies as your primary job, of course, and send that to that newly created lock repository. So we're gonna send that to that repo we just created. We'll hit next. We need to hit immediate. We can have it copy daily. So immediate is going to do as soon as the backup jobs got new data, we're going to immediately get that off to that copy job. So there's not a huge gap between that data in case there is some type of attack or malicious actor after this data. Or we can set up a periodic. So maybe we want consistently looking for new data that's coming through this data stream. And then we can even configure termination windows, especially in that on-premises conversation where we're pulling data back down to this on-premises environment. We can set up windows of time, say during work operations, where we don't want bandwidth being eaten up so that end users are not impacted. And we can even see since we have a intermediate and immediate data saying, hey, we already have data that needs to be copied, that copy job already kicked off and my backup copies already been sent to that secondary repository in this location. 